wonderful people, it's Wild here. Today I'll be showing you some redstone build ideas and decorations to take your Halloween or spooky themed build to the next level. All of these builds are really simple to create, but add some serious wow factor. So let's get creating. The first build we're going to start with is a zombie grave jump scare. And for this you'll be needing two pistons, one of these is not going to be used in the finished design but it's going to help us later on. We'll need an armor stand, some wool, coarse dirt, two redstone, a skulk sensor, a zombie head and a leather tunic. I've dyed mine with a piece of cyan and a piece of blue dye. And then we've got a lodestone, a mossy stone brick wall, and a sign and some ink for our gravestone. You can substitute this lodestone for something like an anvil if you'd like. I'm going to start by building a hole which is three blocks deep and four blocks long. Like this. Then I'm going to come to the back and place in one of my pistons so it's facing upwards. And I'm going to place my armor stand on top. I'm going to switch to my black wool and I'm going to count one block up so I'm placing it in here which is diagonally up from this piston and then I can come two blocks back with my redstone dust. I'm going to place my skulk sensor in last so I shall start decorating now. I'm going to put my tunic and head on my zombie and here's where we're going to be using our second piston. So I've placed in a coarse dirt here and then I want to put one on top of this zombie. I'll also use some placeholder blocks just to put this piston in the right spot. So I face it down into this dirt block. Then I can grab a lever and flick this and it pushes the coarse dirt into place. I'll also build my grave now. I think a lodestone adds a great bit of detail if you can use one. And I'm just going to put rip on mine but you could have a funny pun. Okay, so now that that's in, we can go in with our skulk sensor and cover up this hole with a grass block. So now, we should pop up and go back down. Perfect! For this next build, we're making some jumping monsters and there's quite a few materials here. For the redstone side of things, you'll need three dispensers and these are the ones that when you place them, they have a surprise face instead of the smile. Those ones are droppers and they won't work here. You'll also need three water buckets. I've just got the one since I'm building a creative. I'll need three armor stands, three soul sand, four redstone repeaters, five redstone dust and a skulk sensor. The rest of the supplies are for decorating. Let's start with the redstone though. I'm going to dig two blocks down, two in like this. Then I'm going to come off two to either side, so it's five across, and then go another two blocks back. So we're creating a five by three rectangle here, which is two blocks deep. Then I'll come to the back and break three blocks down, spaced one apart like this. So we have three little sections. This is where we're going to be placing our soul sand. So I'm going to place these in the bottom of here and then I'll put myself into each of these little holes to place in a dispenser so that the face is facing in towards the hole. If you're having an issue where it's facing it up like this, just make sure you're clicking at the very back of the block. Then I can place my arm stands in each of these holes. So here's what we should have so far. Coming out of each of our dispensers, I'll have a redstone repeater and then I'm going to connect all of these up with some redstone dust. I'll have this going into one more repeater and you should have this kind of arrow texture facing towards all of your armor stands. And then my skulk sensor is going to go in here. I like to add this in last after I've added in all the decorations so that I'm not triggering it while I'm decorating. I can then put a, red, uh, a water bucket in each of these dispensers. Just like that. Let's switch out our materials now for some decorating things. I'm going to leave this skulk sensor here in my inventory for when we place it in at the end. I've got a collection of different armors here, as well as some skulls. Let's put these on our mobs. You'll just need the chest plate and the leggings here. Now 
Now that we've got some mobs in, let's add in some graves. For my graves, I've got a mossy stone brick wall, some deep sleep brick walls, and an anvil, a lodestone, and you could substitute this if you're building in survival. I've got two dark oak trapdoors, some coarse dirt, a sign, a polished blackstone brick stair, and then a wither rose. I think I'll start by decorating this one here with the zombie. I'm going in with two gold stirred for this one and then a wither rose. I'm going to place my polished blackstone stair there for the tombstone with a sign. I think I'll make this grave a little more elaborate, going in with an anvil. And then I'm going to have four deep sleep brick walls. And I'm going to keep this one over here simple with a lodestone and a wall. Like that. I'm also going to grab some grass blocks or whatever flooring material you've got around your graveyard and I can fill this in. And over the top of this one I'm going to go in with some trapdoors. So it should look like that. Now I can place in my last important piece and that's my skulk sensor. So that can go in here and I can place my grass block on top. And you can see they bob up and down when there's movement around this skulk sensor. Next we're going to build some spell casting mobs. There's quite a few supplies here and a lot of this comes down to the decoration. You'll also need some water buckets. I'm going to start by creating my magical cauldron using a respawn anchor, four glowstone, four warped trapdoors, some campfires. I'll also grab out my five soul sand and my five armor stands and my cobbled deep slate stairs and slabs. I'm going to start by finding the location that I want to have my respawn anchor cauldron. I'm going to place a campfire in here and surround it with four cobbled deep slate stairs. I can then place my respawn anchor on top of this and use my four glowstone to ignite this respawn anchor. You'll want to be careful here because if you click on it, it is going to explode. So I'm going to be placing these trapdoors by clicking on the stair rather than on the respawn anchor itself. Just like that. Now that that's in place, I can use it to help me locate where I'm going to have my enchanting mobs. So I'm going to count one block out from here and break a hole one down and another one to the diagonal like this. And then I'm going to place a soul sand one below this hole like that. I'm then going to count one over to this side here. So I'm right next to this stair and place in another mob. Then I'm going to come back on a diagonal like this. So I am diagonally away from the stair and place in another mob. And I'm going to do the same thing over this way. So I'm placing in one here. Now you can have your mobs in different locations depending on the look that you want, but I like this distribution here. I can then place armor stands in each of these holes and I want to make sure I'm placing them so that they face towards the cauldron. And I can place a water bucket in each of the holes. You can see they start jumping right away. Alright, so I'm grabbing out all of my armor here. Keep in mind you'll want two sets of this black leather armor. And then I've just got some green and black dyed armor as well as some iron and netherite. And you could use gray dyed armor if you don't have netherite armor to spare. Now, it can be easier to place the armor on before you add in the water, so you can keep that in mind. But I'm just going to place mine on my jumping mobs. So I've got two here with dragon heads. I'm going to go in with one with a zombie head, one with a skeleton head, and then one with a wither skeleton skull. I'm then going to put black armor on the ones with the dragons. And their feet are visible here, so you want to make sure you're putting boots in them as well. Got green armor for the zombie. Oh dear, I put it on myself rather than on the zombie. There we go. And then I've got my netherite armor and my iron armor for my other mobs. I'm gonna put the iron on the skeleton here and the netherite on my wither skeleton. There we go, now they're extra spooky. 
I am back in my chest now and I'm gonna grab out my shulk sensor, my skulk streaker, the rest of my campfires I've already used at once, you'll need four more, then some more cobble deep slate stairs and slabs. And I'll also grab my end chests. Now if you're in survival, you don't need to use these end chests, it still looks fantastic without it. These are just going to add the details around our spooky cauldron. So I'm going to break these end, uh, these end chests into the ground like this. It doesn't matter exactly where they go, but they're going to add a nice little twinkly sparkle texture. And I think I might place the last one over here. I'm going to do the same thing with my four campfires. And let's put the last one maybe here, like that. So we've got our smoke coming up all around. I'm then going to tuck a shulk, screech, a shulk sensor in here, so that way it can set off our shakers. And I think I'll place these around here like this. I'm going to have one here, one here, and then one over this way. And then I'm just going to use a mixture of these cobble deep slate stairs and slabs to fill in around and over the top of these other details. I just want to create a rocky looking texture. It's up to you how many of these you place in. You might like to cover more ground than I do or less. You do want to make sure you're covering up all of the special effects blocks that we've placed in. And I like to make sure by looking from above or from a distance that I've got a nice jaggedy edge. I think I'm going to bring it out this way just a little bit like that and then maybe come one forward here that looks good from above and you can see all the magical potion effects going on around these spooky spell casting mobs next we're going to be working on some spooky lighting now you can implement this into any sized room i've just got a rectangular room here and I've made sure I've got at least six blocks height. So that way when we add in our faux roof, it is going to be a four block high ceiling. I'm gonna be needing 12 blocks of wool here, three skulk sensors, and then three redstone lamps, as well as some building blocks for my roof. And when we're breaking this down, you'll be needing a skulk sensor per redstone lamp and then four wool per redstone lamp. I'm gonna come into my room here and start by placing in my sensors. These are just going to be where I want my lights to be. So I'm having one, one away from the wall here, and then I'm going to count three blocks to space mine out. I think this gives a good distribution of lighting. Then I'm going to take my black wall and place these in the four kind of sides around each of these blocks. Like that. And I can place a lantern underneath and you can see these are going to start lighting up right away. I'll then take my deep sleep tiles or whatever wall uh, roofing material you're going to be using and fill in all the way around here. You can see you can expand this to fit any sized room and it is a great feature for a haunted house. Now keep in mind that because the lights do turn off you might have some mobs spawning so if you're building this in survival it's a great feature to put in a room where you've got a slab floor or beware that you might have a few mobs walking around your haunted house. And you can see as I start walking down here, the lights are going to turn on and give the room a lovely ambience. Another way you can utilize this same lighting idea is to use them in some petrified trees like these ones here. So I've got three petrified trees, so I need three redstone lamps and three skulk sensors, as well as some dripstone blocks to fill in any blocks that I'm breaking. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look for it underneath and break part of the trunk here to replace it with a lamp. I can then come in behind this lamp on top to add in my skulk sensor and then add back in my tree. And I can do this for all of these. This way when I'm walking through my spooky petrified forest, I'm going to have some spooky lights coming on from the trees. You might notice that for some of these trees, you may need to bring down your dripstone blocks just so you can hide more of this redstoning. 
and you may want to make sure that you're not placing your skulk sensor up too high in the tree or it won't turn on when you walk by. I'm just going to come around here and bring my petrified leaves down a little bit. And if you'd like to see a tutorial on how to create these trees, as well as some more decorations to go alongside all of these redstone creations, check out the tutorial in the description down below. Now you can see as I walk near to these trees, they're going to turn on with the light to add a great feeling to my spooky forest. I hope you enjoy creating these spooky redstone builds. If you did, I'd really appreciate if you consider liking and subscribing. And if you'd like to support me more and get some awesome benefits, check out my Patreon. See you in another video and stay spooky!